The seven spirits of God. What are they? Where do they come from? Of course, we know they come from God because they're his spirits. But how can we possibly understand that? And down through the years, you've heard many things. But straight from our Father's word, I want you to all understand the seven spirits of God. If you would, open your Bibles to the great book of Revelation, chapter 4. And let's do just a little bit of searching here in our Father's Word. And we're just going to take some food for thought and see if we can piece it together for ourselves. Chapter 4 and verse 4, you know, this is where John was taken to the Lord's Day, meaning all the way to the end, where the first day of the millennium and showing all the things that would happen. But here he's looking at the throne of God. So understand it. Verse 4 reads, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. I believe myself, and it's not that important, but I believe that's the twelve patriarchs and the twelve disciples. Uh, minus one or plus one or something. Clothed, sitting clothed in white raiment, meaning they certainly had earned their righteous acts. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Verse 5, listen carefully here. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voice, voices. Of course, every time God speaks, it roars. Okay, well, I mean, in a nice way, of course. And there were seven lamps, important now, seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, now let's analyze that. Seven lamps. Okay, got it. Now chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. That means that on the, within and the back side means it was complete. The whole word was right there if you understood it. Verse 2, and I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Verse 3, and no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. For, and I wept much. This would be John speaking now, the father guiding because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And that would be frustrating. That would be confusing. You know. And it is confusing not to be able to understand, but always dig until it clarifies. It will, if you don't give up. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Hey, hey, don't, don't, get, a, don't get in a sweat. Everything's cool. Okay. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. He should be able to. He's the, he is the word, okay? And to loose the seven seals thereof. Six, now really pay attention for me. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Well, we know Christ was crucified, and that's who we're looking at having seven horns and seven eyes. I repeat, seven eyes. I'll repeat again. Having seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. What do we got here? We've got seven lamps that are the seven spirits of God. And we got seven eyes here that are the seven spirits of God. So the two got to meet somewhere. Somewhere, we're, we're being told something there that lamps and eyes have got to jive somewhere, okay? Or we're not getting it because the, the absolute explanation is the seven spirits of God. Agree? Right. It's got to be, okay? Um, 
and, and important, the seven spirits of God sent forth. They what? They were sent forth into all the earth. That means that's the equivalent of walking to and fro on the earth. Okay. Interesting, what? Hmm. That means we're exposed to them some way, if we can just kind of understand it. Verse 7. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials, vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. God hears them all. He keeps them bottled. Every time a saint is one of God's elect. When you pray, it's bottled, okay? And he will do what's best for you. And what his purpose is for you is exactly how it will be answered. Nine. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, whomsoever will. He's ready. All you have to do is search, repent, seek, and find. Okay? Ten. And has made us unto our, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Whoa. Now that's you know, we know that during the millennium, we're told in Ezekiel 44 that the elect will be priest on earth. That's the election, you know. There's 7,000 of them, which is a number that simply means seven, meaning spiritual completeness. They're the only kings and priests, that is to say priests, that I know of. And the kings, of course, is the kings and queens of the nations from verse to every kindred tongue and spirit. I really don't know of anyone else that it's stipulated in God's word that will be priests during the millennium age. And that's what this is talking about. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. You couldn't count them. In other words, that's all that had overcome. There's a lot. They're already there. And this is then. Twelve. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive. I want you to count these. And I don't want you to forget them. Power, one. And riches, two. And wisdom, three. And strength, four. And honor, five. And glory, six. And blessings, seven. It's not the seven spirits of God, but it's the attributes thereof. I don't know. Have you had any of those? Think about it. Think about it. Have you claimed them? Whew, boy, that is really, you know, that creates kind of a puzzle, doesn't it? Until we, we got lamps and we got eyes. And naturally, if we've studied God's word, we think, huh, I know where there's seven lamps. It's in the book of Zechariah. And I also know where there's seven eyes. They're in the book of Zechariah. So I believe best for us, you know, that's the way it is when you try to reason something this out, but What's really a blessing is if you've got the Holy Spirit helping you and he just zaps you with it <laughs> all at one time. That's what he did to me, okay? And I almost couldn't continue on preaching the subject I was supposed to be preaching at that time, okay? And, uh, and made a comment to, the, to that effect. Zechariah chapter 3. Minor prophets. Next to the last book in the Old Testament. 
Zechariah, meaning in the Hebrew tongue, remembered of Yah, remember, meaning God remembers his people. He knows where they are. And in verse 8 of that third chapter, we have Joshua, which always is the high, he was the high priest. It means Jesus, all right, in the, from the Hebrew tongue, Yeshua. O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. There's no gender in this. That means they're for signs of a time when they do what they're supposed to do that will be symbolic and will be as good as a date knowing what's happening. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. In other words, whoever these people are, they have a great deal to do with bringing forth the word of the branch who was able to break the seals. Verse 9, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Well, you know what that day is. There's only one time in history that God's going to remove all sin in one day. And look around you, friend, it hadn't happened yet. I think you all realize we got sin in this world with a capital S, okay? We've got people that like to poke fun at Christians, but it ain't going to be funny much longer. They're not funny at all. It will be a very serious, serious uh, offense. God doesn't like that. So there we got seven eyes. Well, now we've all taught and believed and known, hey, those are God's 7,000 elect, again, which is the spiritual number of spiritual completeness, meaning the number of people, both of the kings and queens and the, and the, um, the uh, of the tribes that fulfill the plan of God. God. They overcame in the first earth age, and God uses them. Good. Could that be the eyes we're talking about here? Well, we know in this particular place it's the eyes because it is those voices that Christ comes through on earth to bring forth his word. There's no great mystery in that. That's absolute. Verse 10, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, sh shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. That means he's going to have his own and there'll be plenty of everything. Well, that hasn't happened yet. I think many of you probably are still making payments on your homes, you know, and your vine may even wither every once in a while, you know. It just, it just hasn't happened. We got problems. So that's something we look forward to and it's the future. And of course, naturally, you know we're in the millennium when that takes place. Now he backtracks and gives us a profile shot of this same thing. And ultimately it ends up the two witnesses, okay? Chapter four, verse one. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked with me as a man that is wakened, rather. He waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, okay? Just trying to get your old head cleared a little bit and think. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I looked. And behold, a candlestick, all of gold. With a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon. Bingo. Seven lamps. Do you remember back now? I want you to weave that together with Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. Before the altar were seven lamps, and the seven lamps were the seven spirits of God. Okay? No mystery in that. We got our seven lamps. It's called a menorah to most people. And seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. From the reservoir, the pipes feed each lamp, each of the seven spirits of God. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. Four. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, what are these? 
my Lord, tell me. And you have the right to ask also, what, what are they? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. By this time you're wanting to say, Tell me. <laughs> Let's don't keep any secrets here. Six. Then he answered and he spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, which means born in Babel, born in confusion. Every last one of you were born in confusion. Meaning, you didn't know the truth wholly, but you came out of it into the Word of God. And it is the Word of God to Zerubbabel that did it, that brought you out. Saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Spirit of God moves the oil from the reservoir to each of the seven lamps. It is the Spirit of God. So we got seven spirits pumping oil, okay? And oil is truth. Seven, who art thou, O great mountain? That, uh, if you have the faith of a mustard, a mountain is a nation. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can chunk it in the ocean, all right? We're talking about the Kenite nation. That is to say what Satan will bring against us. He's nobody. Okay? We have power and authority over him. And if you're mean enough, he runs when you walk in a room. He can't stand it. Because we're hard on his head. Because through Christ, we have the power to thump his gourd. All right? All the way back to Genesis chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. All right? So it doesn't hurt to do a little thumping every once in a while if you start having a few troubles and pretty soon he'll say, "Woo, that hurts. Leave that person alone, okay? Seven, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. I'm going to flatten you. I'm going to level you. You're not going to mount a hill of beans, much less a mountain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings crying, grace, grace unto it. Now that's an interesting thought. He shall bring forth the headstone thereof. You know who the headstone is? That's Christ. Now it didn't mean that he had the power. It meant that through the pumping of the seven and so forth, that this would be a sign of the times that would ultimately bring forth Christ at the second advent. Okay, you got that? That's real simple now. Hang with me. The headstone or the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected is Christ, okay? He will become a stumbling block to many because in believing in Christ and not knowing about the Antichrist will cause many to stumble because they're going to jump in bed with the Antichrist thinking he's the real Jesus. You know that. I don't have to tell you. Verse 8, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. You know, it started back in Haggai. His hands shall also finish it. That one generation, they're going to do it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Okay, 10. For who hath despised the day of small things? You know, uh, we're in a time that there are no giants as far as God's elect are concerned. I mean, if, if a giant gets in your way, kick him out. Get him out of the way. There are no giants for God's elect if you have the boldness to get after it. Because God's going to bless you. It's that time. It's got to be done for him, not you. Understand? Okay. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet <clears throat> That's the stone. Remember the stone that had the seven eyes? We just read about it in the third chapter, okay? In the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now go back to chapter 5, and it said, here are seven eyes that have been sent to the earth, and they are the seven spirits of God. Man, I tell you what, this is sure beginning to tie the message of election 
into the seven spirits of God. And it should, really shouldn't it? Because if they're not under God's spirit, then whose spirit would they be under? They know they're under God's spirit. They wouldn't serve any other God. So what is so unusual then about the Holy Spirit pumping into the lamps and God's election contain and hold the spirits of God in all seven um, dominions, those that God chooses to fulfill his plan that brings forth the second advent of Christ. It's written. Well, what are they supposed to do? Well, we'll talk about that some more here in a minute. But I'll read that one more time. With these seven, they, and he's explaining, he's not asking a question, they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Not in heaven, but on the earth doing what? Taking forth that word that's in that book that the seals are broken to them. That builds the many-membered temple. And the plummet is God's nature of gravity that holds a plumb bob straight and level. In other words, meaning using common sense, God works through his people and accomplishes what it is he would have done. Verse 11, then, I, then answered I and I said unto him, Who are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and he said unto him, what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. 14. And then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. The two sons of oil. Oil, Eliyah in the Hebrew tongue, is the oil of our people. And from it, it the meaning truth that the truth flows through those stems. But again, never misunderstand what it is that causes it to flow. Not might, not power, but by the seven spirits of God flow that truth. And some might say, well, are you, is he saying what I think he's saying, that maybe the 7,000 possess the Spirit of God, I didn't say that. They do not. Nobody possesses the Spirit of God. Because God only, not by might, not when you want it, but when He wants it. Okay, you got that? You know how God works. He only flows the truth when He's ready. But my, how He has unleashed the seals here in these generations. That truth abounds. And many, and I'm going to close right now. I'm going to just leave this as, don't call it a riddle. It's pretty obvious. To Mark chapter 13. Why would it be a big mystery? For we know that Mark 13 speaks of God's election. Those that will be priests in the millennium age. Doesn't make them any special over anyone else. It's just that they chose God before a lot of other people did. And what is their purpose? What is it that when they perform a certain thing, it's right at knocking at the door of that day that the Father returns? It's real simple. It's when they are delivered up. What pours through them? Do they get up there and say, I've been studying the Bible 50 years, and buddy, if you want to know something about it, I probably can, you know, take a, take a lick at it. No, that, that's not what they're supposed to do. Let's read what it is they're supposed to do and fit that with the scriptures we have covered and let the word answer for itself. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. I want you to picture seven lamps. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that's the hour it's going to happen. That speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So, you see, it would be a little premature for one to take on some special feeling. 
because the seven lamps happen to be the 7,000 because they don't have all that much to do it with it other than discipline and obedience for God moves the Holy Spirit through those lamps. And those are the lamps and the eyes of God on this earth. Not in heaven, not underneath the earth, but there is no other group that takes that truth forward in this generation, the generation of the fig tree, as uh, like that uh, God's elect does. Am I saying that's all in this group? I don't know, not necessarily. You have to judge that for yourself, how many groups are God's elect? Where do you hear the truth taught? Chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Doesn't take a smart person to figure it out. So you're not saying the 7,000 are all special because God, in a sense, looks at them like at, as the seven eyes on earth and the seven lamps because all they are really is lamp stands reflecting the light of Almighty God as he uses them to bring to pass his overall plan. Okay, that's simple. That, I don't want to have to punch any holes in any balloons and have you go up around here, all right? I want you to understand. It doesn't make you some special critter, you know. But it does mean you're special in the sense that you can be a blessing to the ignorant, that you can be a blessing to the unlearned. When God chooses to speak through you for a purpose, if we had read another letter, it would say, I'm a verse in Mark 13. I don't have to read it to you from there. You've all got it memorized, probably. For the truth must go. Christ's word must go to the whole earth before the end can be. Who takes it? Who does God utilize? His election when they're delivered up. And they can't take all that much credit because it's God that speaks through them. But it isn't it wonderful to love him enough and trust him enough and to be obedient enough to him that you will allow him to use you for that? It makes you kind of special. I think you're all a pretty good looking bunch of table lamps myself. You know? I think you glow just real nice. And I had an old uncle one time that glowed every weekend, but wasn't that glow, okay? So. I'm going to leave that with you. I think it's beautiful when you stop and think about it. Be humble before your father. And, um, well, this is it. 1998, Passover is coming to a close. But 1998 is going to be a fantastic year. So just keep, you know what, you know what your belt is? It's the word of God. You keep it cinched up. Keep your britches on. Be ready to ride. Stand up and act like children of God because your Father wants to use you for your benefit, no, for the benefit of this crazy, mixed up, lost world.